Uh, welcome to the third video in this um, mini series uh, regarding campaign management and in this video we're going to look at creating your own uh, campaigns uh, for the purposes of exporting that campaign material to uh, a module which you can then use in other uh, campaigns. So <clears throat> I've um, off camera gone ahead and created a, a campaign uh, so that we can look at it and I've called it uh, dev for development uh, 5e and I've just called it video campaign so I would suggest that you uh, set up your um, campaigns or when you're creating your, a development campaign that you make it clear that that is what it is um, so that you don't confuse that with the play campaigns because you should not uh, under any real circumstances use your play campaign to export material. You should always uh, create a special campaign simply to develop material uh, that you can export into uh, a module. It keeps things much cleaner, uh, it will cause less confusion uh, and you will uh, make less mistakes. So I've set up this campaign as I say, call it a name, uh, all the rest of it. Uh, so let's just uh, start it and see what's in it. Uh, okay, so uh, once we've loaded up, um, what I've got here is I've just added um, a, a bunch of uh, bits and pieces uh, into this uh, module. Uh, just sort of uh, little bits that you, you might have that you maybe uh, would uh, do yourself, um, uh, you know, for uh, anything that you're going to be uh, creating. Um, now, you may or may not necessarily be uh, creating all of this kind of stuff. You might just be creating uh, NPCs or you might just be creating stories or um, whatever. Uh, the principle of all of this is exactly the same. Um, I've even got a little bit of um, reference manual here as well uh, so that we've got uh, you know a little page or two showing this village with a, an image in it and uh, something about the dog and duck with another image, etc., etc. So let's have a look in uh, some more detail uh, at uh, what what we've got here. Um, so our first page is an introduction. So our story entries are all going to start with uh, an alphanumeric uh, number uh, up at the top here. Um, this is going to keep it uh, in in line. You can see we've got story 001 and story 002, and then we've got 010, and this, this indicates different uh, chapters, um, if you like, uh, for our story entry. So to keep them in order, if you just put a title in there, then they'll go in alphabetical order, and that's obviously going to be no use at all. So you want to have your um, start here with uh, the number so that you know exactly where the story falls in the list. Now, of course, you can create uh, your own chapters here. If we go to uh, this uh, story, uh, the group up here, uh, if we click on the green uh, Add Category button, we can get a new uh, group. Um, if we hit the Edit Groups button, we can uh, edit that. And let's say we can call this now uh, Chapter uh, 1. Um, and if we open up uh, the top uh, and then we can drag entries from the bottom into uh, that chapter and it, that means that that uh, now has uh, all the stories for chapter one in it and then we can go on and create chapter two and whatever. Um, and if uh, everything that you create, if you don't create a, 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 a group, everything that you create will fall into this uncategorized group. Um, uh, but you can uh, add your own groups and then just drag the uh, entries in. Or if you wanted to uh, create a new entry into chapter one, then we just uh, do so and we would uh, have 00.03. Uh, um, and uh, story, whatever. Uh, and you can see that it falls in. So it automatically go, goes into the group. So you may want to set up your groups before you start uh, creating your story entries. And exactly the same thing happens with uh, any of these things. So if we've got these uh, NPCs, for example, 
if you were exporting a list of NPCs, then maybe you would want to create a new group. Uh, go to edit. Uh, we can go to this and let's say uh, we're calling this one uh, humans. So uh, these two entries here, then we go into the uh, humans uh, group. Uh, so when we select that, uh, there they are. So <clears throat> any of these uh, things down here encounters quests stories tables etc you can create your own groups for them and these will export when we come to exporting the module and it'll keep things uh, nice and clean now we've also got a, a link to image here and we showed you in the first video um, uh, how to uh, put that in there so if we go to sorry assets and go to our campaign and images and uh, sorry images campaign uh, you'll see all the images that we have got in our um, module um, if we go to the folder here uh, we can open this up uh, and we will see all the images so any images that you want to uh, export or any images you have created uh, you uh, will find them uh, in in here unless you created them actually inside fantasy grounds entirely but any images that you have got um, that you want to include in your module should be in the uh, images folder inside the campaign. And you'll notice also that this one uh, here, the tavern map, has got an XML file. Uh, that's the line of sight for this tavern map here, which uh, I created in Dungeon Alchemist. And that created the XML for me as well. So that means that this map will have a line of sight and lighting, etc., on it as well. Uh, and there's a similar story for uh, tokens. If we go to uh, our tokens and open up campaign and go to folder, uh, we can see that all the tokens that we're going to be using uh, in our uh, campaign for any NPCs we're creating uh, are in a folder called tokens inside the uh, 5e video campaign uh, folder. Um, now, it's important that you include all these things in uh, these particular locations, otherwise uh, they're not going to export properly and you're going to have broken links. Um, if we look at the next story entry, uh, here we've got uh, our image for our robber. We've got uh, the tavern battle map, which has got line of sight and lighting on it, etc. And then we have an encounter, etc., etc. So all of these things um, we've got in here. We've got a parcel for uh, some treasure uh, when the uh, enemies are defeated. We've got a table here, which is going to generate uh, some uh, ra a random parcel for us. So all of these things uh, we are going, we've created uh, in here. Um, and we, we've also created uh, a class, if we go to uncategorize, we've got a class with, that we haven't filled it in like we've just uh, sort of created a, a basic uh, class, we've got a race. So all, all of these things, anything that you're wanting to create uh, for use in a play campaign, you would create in this campaign here. Um, uh, you, if you wanted to, to add in some skills, if you wanted to add in feats or anything like that, then you just do that uh, as you would and create it all in here. Now, the only thing that you uh, shouldn't bother creating is notes because notes are for players. Um, they're not really for the DM uh, and notes will not export. So don't create notes and expect them to uh, export. Um, the best place for your uh, notes is really in the reference section um, and this is where you would have the background to your world or uh, to characters or whatever you like you, you would put this in the reference section that would be uh, my recommendation for the best place to put that kind of thing. Now, another thing that will not export is something which is already in uh, a module. So if we go to our NPC list here, oh, we had it open, and we've got the monster manual here loaded. Um, none of these monsters are going to uh, export because they do not exist in the campaign. They only exist in the monster manual. Um, so if you wanted to uh, sort of have a, an Aarakocra, uh, and change that then you can make a copy of it and then we can open up the copy then we can unlock it and then we could change it so if you wanted to change its armor class or its hit points or uh, whatever give it new uh, 
traits or actions, whatever, um, give it a different token, uh, give it a, a different image, whatever you want it to do, uh, then you can do that in your creation campaign and obviously give it a, another name. Um, but now that you've made a copy of it, that copy exists in your campaign here, in the development campaign, and that is now exportable. Um, but it wouldn't be, uh, because you can't actually edit the original anywhere of the monster manual, so you would need to make a copy if you wanted to alter any of the monster manual uh, NPCs, for example. Um, so you would need to make that copy first and then you can make your alterations and then it would be uh, exportable. Um, and as we mentioned as well, the uh, encounter here, these uh, characters that we created here, we've used the tokens from this uh, tokens uh, folder here to create these tokens. Um, so now that we have really created everything, it's time to uh, export them. Uh, so to do that, we can either type forward slash export into chat there and press return, or if you go to modules, there's an export button uh, there. Um, and clicking that brings up uh, this screen. Um, so we need to give the uh, thing a name. So let's just do that. Um, thumbnail is absolutely optional, uh, but if we uh, click on this, then you will get your uh, normal uh, sort of Windows uh, screen. Um, so I've got one in uh, my campaigns and uh, development video campaign. So I've got a little thumbnail there. So I'm just going to select that um, and then the file name. Um, and then we've got a display name as well. Now, these do not all have to be the same. You can have them anything you like. The important one really is the display name because that's the one that's going to appear in the list of modules. Um, uh, you can give it a category um, and you can uh, then uh, give it uh, a name. Uh, of the author of whatever. So you just basically fill these uh, sections in. The only two that's absolutely required is the file name uh, and the name of the uh, module. The rest of it is, is uh, optional. Um, if this is a module that you want to share with your players, then tick the play module. Uh, if this is going to be available for any rule set, then tick the any rule set module. This would probably only be if you were um, exporting tokens or if you were exporting uh, like only tokens uh, or uh, only images or whatever. Um, obviously, there's no point in us, uh, since this is all for 5e, clicking that because it's not going to work in any rule set. It'll open, but it won't work. Um, and you only want to use read only if it really is that if it, if it is going to be a read only uh, module like a, a reference module then you'd click but stay clear of uh, read only i would suggest the the only one that you're probably likely to use is the player module because if you're creating a bunch of races and classes and feats and things like that um, but no adventure material then it would most likely be a player module. You'd want this to be available to your players. So if you tick that box, it will uh, default to being shared. Um, and then you need to tell uh, Fantasy Grounds what you want to export. Now, the easiest thing to do is just to click the All button uh, and it will export everything. But uh, you've got some finer control uh, than that. Uh, if you uh, don't want to uh, export all then uh, you can just select what it is that you want to uh, actually export so we know we've got classes we've got an encounter we've got a random encounter uh, we want to export images etc so you go through and tick uh, all of that and if you for example maybe we didn't want to export every image so if we go to our uh, image list here and go to uncategorized maybe we only wanted to export the tavern so we can just drag that one image uh, over here if we also wanted the tavern map we could drag that in so you can drag individual items into the export window uh, you can tick individual uh, categories or you can just uh, click uh, the all
So um, let's uh, just delete these two for the moment and let's just go with uh, all. You've also got the uh, export record views. Uh, so this is the kind of thing if you go to the uh, player's handbook and equipment, um, not equipment, uh, then you you can see this. You've got adventuring gear, armor, weapons, etc. So you can uh, click um, items if you've got sort of armor items or mounts or whatever, and, and it will appear uh, in. Well, it'll actually appear in the library here. Um, but you can click any of these if you wanted to have more uh, or finer control uh, over what lists that, that you sh that's shown in the library in the window. I uh, will not bother with any of that, but it's there should you want to. Uh, and then once you're happy, uh, then you just uh, click export and you'll get a message down in chat to say that the module has been exported successfully. Uh, now, if we went to activation here and uh, tried to uh, find, uh, we can actually close this now. Um, if we uh, went to activation here and tried to actually find our uh, module, we won't find it. Um, because the modules are uh, initialized when Fantasy Ground starts. So we don't see this module that we've just exported until we uh, start uh, the Fantasy Grounds uh, application again. Um, but furthermore, you do not ever want to open up your exported module in the campaign that you're exporting from, uh, because that will again lead to a tremendous amount of confusion because you will end up with duplicate entries for everything um, if we go to our humans, we would see two robbers and two robber leaders um, and then you would start editing the wrong one and so on and so forth. So never ever open up the module uh, that you have exported in your exporting uh, campaign and the campaign that you're exporting from. Uh, right, so let's have a look at another campaign then and see if we can find our uh, module. Uh, okay, um, we have um, opened up a brand new campaign uh, and we'll go to uh, modules and activation and we will type in my test module and here we are, uh, if we load that up uh, and we'll see uh, everything that we have exported. Oh, I also created a character as well, um, which I forgot to mention. Um, so. Everything that we created in our, our uh, testing campaign or, or our creation campaign uh, is uh, all here. We've got encounters, uh, we've got some random encounters, the classes, um, items that we created, etc. We've got our uh, reference manual uh, that's uh, there. Uh, we've got all our story entries uh, is there as well. Uh, so everything uh, that we exported, including <laughs> including that random result, uh, which you obviously would delete before you uh, went into it. And if we look in um, our story list here, we've got uh, our chapters have exported, so we can go to chapter one. And we will see here that the we've got this uh, book icon, which we saw in the last video, um, meaning that uh, these are, uh, entries are now uh, in a module. Um, you can still edit these in this campaign, but you can't then export from this module. Uh, so it's another thing I see quite commonly is people open up their um, modules in another campaign, then they start editing this here and then try and export that. It will not work. Uh, so uh, any edits that you want to make, make them in your development campaign, uh, only uh, edit there and just use your play campaign to actually uh, run the uh, modules. Um, okay, I think that's uh, probably about it. Uh, and uh, thanks for watching. I might do another one video showing some technical aspects of the file structure of the modules and things like that, but we'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching. Cheers for now.